all the praise. We give you all the glory for you are worthy to be praised. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all the believers say it together, amen. Put your hands together and just give God some praise in this place for all of the many blessings that the Lord has bestowed upon us. I am aware that it is a bit toasty. Uh, I'm going to try to get you all in and get you all out. I want to say a great big thank you to Reverend Daniels for, amen. Thank you for staying on this Sunday. Amen. Thank God for you, Rev, and pray that God will continue to smile upon you and Sister Daniels and your family. We have a wonderful lesson for our spiritual consideration tonight. Somebody holler, the Lord is with me. So we thank God for all that God has done for us. We're going back to Samuel chapter 18. We're going to look tonight at verses 10 through 15. And our subject matter is going to be the Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. When we finished um, on last week, Saul was getting angry, right? Because uh, David was getting song sung to him. Uh, Saul killed his 1,000, David his 10,000s. So Saul is now starting to have issues with David. And the Lord gave David the right connection. He connected him um, with someone who is going to help him from this moment forward in his life in many ways that he has doesn't even have the ability to um, comprehend how important his relationship with Jonathan is going to be. So tonight we continue our walk through chapter 18 and we find um, uh, ourselves tonight in verse 10. We want to start with a uh, something for you to think about. Hey man, I'm a first slide, something for you to think about. The enormity of the responsibility that God has placed on you will sometimes make you feel inadequate. It will cause you to question your purpose and your progress. It will fill you, fill you with anxiety as you walk with expectations. We must always remember that regardless of what we face, the battles that we fight are the issues that we fear. The battle that we fight are the issues that we fear. The Lord is with us. And as long as the Lord is with us, we cannot and we will not fail. Sometimes what God puts in front of you looks so big to you that it makes you feel smaller than who you really are. It makes you uh, fearful, Sister Garrett, of what's going on or where God is calling you to be because it looks like something that you cannot accomplish. You start walking, even though you're walking with expectations, you still deal with anxiety in the midst of that walk. And you always have to remind yourself, because watch this, even sometimes when God places you or directs you in a place or in directions, sometimes it, it, is, it looks like God is far from you. And you're walking in his purpose and you're walking in his direction and you're walking with his directions. And still, you sometimes wonder, God, have you forgotten about me? God, why is it so difficult? I know I'm doing what you call me to do. Why is it so hard? I know I'm walking according to your will for my life. Why am I battling so many battles? Sometimes it makes you feel like you're all by yourself. But you have to remember in those moments, in those situations, that the Lord is with you. So we're going to get into this tonight and see what the Lord has for us to glean um, from this lesson. Somebody read uh, verse number 10. Somebody read verse number 10. All right, 
right, so the next day, the next day, the day after uh, David gets the credit, right? The day after uh, uh, they sing songs to David, the, the day after they, they, they are dancing and, and, and giving David all of this credit, an evil spirit overcomes Saul. And the Bible says the evil spirit from God. So y'all get deep, huh? God controls all spirit realm.
should not be done. What else is that?
minding his own business, playing his heart. The enemy throws a spear, trying to kill you. When the enemy tries to kill you, God keeps you alive. Next, when the enemy attacks, God will avenge you. When the enemy attacks you, God will avenge you. Next, the enemy will do to you to try and stop what God is doing through you. It's just that the enemy will try to hurt you to try and stop what God is doing through you. The enemy will try to do harm to you to stop what God is doing through you. The enemy doesn't want what you have to become a reality. He doesn't want your possibilities to become a reality. He doesn't want your anointing to become a reality. He doesn't want what God has placed you to become a reality. So he'll try to do stuff to you to stop what God is doing through you. It's really not about you, but it's about what God has placed in you. So he's going to do what he can do to try to stop what God is doing with you. Next. When the enemy is trying to hurt you, God will hold you. When the enemy is trying to hurt you, God will hold you. And when God holds you, he protects you. It didn't matter what Saul threw at David. Because David has been anointed to be king. God has already given him his stamp of approval. God has already provided him with everything that he needs to be who God is calling him to be. And no devil in hell can stop what God puts in motion. They can't stop it. They can't stop it. That's why some folk can't stand you because they can't stop you. That's why some folk always try to, to divide you because they can't defeat you. They're, 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 they're always trying to tear you down because they can't stop you from being built up. They're always trying to make you less than because they can't stand you being more than. So he's always trying to hurt you. But you don't have to worry about the enemy trying to hurt you because you can remember what God has given you and know that if God said it, that it settles it. And while you try to hurt me, God holds me. And while you try to say what I can't do, God tells me what I can do. And while you try to show me who you are, God shows me who he is. And why are you saying, give up? God says, keep going. And why are you saying, it won't work? God says, all things work together for the good of them who love me and are called according to my purpose. So you have to learn how to walk in God's word in the world that you live in, in the situations that you endure, in the people that you deal with. You ain't got to argue with them with your words. Use God's word. Tell them, no more than the conqueror. No, I'm victorious through Jesus Christ. No, the battle in my head belongs to the Lord. No, I'm not going nowhere. I shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I shall not be moved. You got to learn how to walk in the word, in the power of who God is. David did not have to worry about Saul because God was on his side. Because God was holding his hand. God was walking with him. And when David got too weak, God walked forward. He carried him. So always remember, while the enemy is trying to hurt you, God will hold you. Yeah, he will hold you. When they bring up accusations against you, 
God will hold you. When they say you won't make it, God will hold you. When they tell you to throw in the towel, God will hold you. Don't give up. Don't give in. Stay right there. Because God didn't bring you this far to leave you. Somebody ought to give God a great big hand clap of praise right there. For you know that he did not bring you this far to leave you by yourself. Somebody read verses uh, 13 and 14. But God 
is sending me up. God is keeping me up. God is holding me up. Everything that you did to try to hurt me, God brought me through it. He brought me over it. He took me around it. He took me, he took me through it. I didn't have to go in it. Because the Lord will take care of me. He gives us, Sister Bogaski, success in all situations. That's why some folk can't stand you. Because everything you do, God blesses you. They can't stand you. Because it looks like every time you turn around, the Lord is doing something else for you. You didn't got a new job that you was unqualified for. Making more money than you ever made. Living where you want to live, driving what you want to drive, and you don't bother nobody. And every time you turn around, God keeps on making a way for you. You come to church looking pretty, smiling, looking like you're looking. Ain't bothering nobody. And every time you show up, you look better than you did the last week. Why? Because God just keeps on blessing you. You have success all around you. Your children are blessed. Your house is blessed. Man, your dog and cat are blessed. Everything around you is blessed. And a blessing. And watch this sometimes. But when you bless, you don't mind blessing somebody else. You don't mind helping somebody else. You don't mind lifting somebody else. You don't mind laughing for somebody else. You don't mind rejoicing for somebody else. He gives you success and all. That's what I love about God. I said, Lord, that too. Thank you, Lord. You start thinking some pain. And before you know it, you say, Lord, thank you. And you sit there by two, three seconds. You say, Lord, for that too. Three, four, five more seconds. Lord, I almost forgot about that. Thank you for that too. Ten seconds later, Lord, thank you for that too. Now you can start laughing. And you just going down the street laughing. And folks looking at you like you're crazy. Because ain't nobody in the car but you and the Holy Spirit. But you know that the Bible says God will make you laugh. Some Bible readers in here. God will make you laugh and give you a reason to lift your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. I don't know about you, y'all, but I didn't been over there to that slab so many times. Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand because I don't tell y'all everything, but I'm just going to tell y'all this because you need to know it. I've been to that slab every day since the building failed. Unless I was, unless I was going out of town. But if I was here, sometime in that 24 hour period, I'd go over there. And I'd sit there in the parking lot, right there at the gate. And I'd say, Lord, I see a miracle in the mess. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, nobody got hurt. I thank you, Lord, that you're putting the right people in the right place. For things to work out for the good of them who love you according to your glory. Look at her, God. She looks a mess. Yes, she looks a mess. Oh, but you can't have a miracle if you don't have a mess. Lord, she looks a mess. Look at her, God. It's breaking my heart to see her with the roof that's supposed to be up. It's down, Lord. It's breaking my heart to see the bricks that's supposed to be up on the on. On the, on the church in the in the parking lot. Oh, they look, oh but then God did something. He moved, and then the next thing you know, the building had been moved. And I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for all of the years we were there, giving you praise and glory, telling you thank you for everything that you've done. But Lord, it ain't nothing here now but a slab. Lord, it ain't nothing here now but a slab. But Lord, we thank you for the slab. We thank you the slab, God, and we believe we're going to be able to use the slab again. Lord, we're speaking those things that be not as though they are. And then we had a group of us. We'd go on Saturday mornings 
and we pray and we ask the Lord and we just watched and we just waited and we just waited and we just watched and we watched and we waited and we waited and we watched it. Sometimes we got frustrated. Sometimes we got diff we had difficulties. Sometimes we got discouraged. Sometimes we almost went into depression. But we go back over there. We stay there for five minutes and we say good morning, Calvary. Oh, oh, I see your future and it looks better to me. Oh, and I went by there today. I don't tell me what I can't do. I went by there today and not all of the beams up. The beams are connected. You, you didn't hear what I said. The beams are connected because God will give you success. Make the 
people who tried to kill you watch you live. Look at somebody. Give them a high five and say, watch me live, baby. positive. It 
doesn't mean anything to me if I don't choose to focus on the positive. If all I see is what's wrong, I'm never going to get what's right. If all I can see is what we can't, I'll never experience what we can't. If all I can see is where we lack, I'll never see where we're more than enough. If all I can hear is what we can't do, I can never hear what God can do. What are you listening to? Because what you listen to is going to determine what you Believe in what you receive. Yeah. He had to remember, even when everything around me looks bad, the Lord is with me. Yeah. And Saul, when you throwing your spears trying to kill me, put me in the front of the line to get me killed, God kept on elevating me. And the people, watch this who used to cheer for you are now cheering for me. But I'm not going to get caught up in the cheers because the same people that cheer you will cheer you. Same ones who love you on Sunday will crucify you on Friday. Jesus rode in, they were singing Hosanna on Palm Sunday. By the time, by time Friday got there, Judas was, 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 was betraying him with a kiss. And he told him, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. Because the same ones that lift you up, they'll throw you down. That's why we have to keep our eyes on the Lord and know that the Lord is with us. We're done. Let's put our hands together and give God a hand. Thank God for praise for his word on tonight. Next week, we're going to continue this walk through um, this, continue this walk through Samuel chapter 18. Okay? We're going to see how Saul starts to try to manipulate things. Saul tries to start manipulating things. Now, I want you to do something that's a little bit, um, um, that some say is a little bit controversial. But y'all know, um, sometimes I'm too liberal for my own good. But I want to challenge you to do something while you read the story next week. I want you to look at how the young women in the story moving forward are treated. And we're gonna talk about that, okay? I want you to look at the women in the story that's about to be introduced to us. And I want you to look at how they are treated. And we're gonna talk about that um, on next week. Because I think that there's a lot for us to glean from that that will help us as we continue to move forward in being who God is calling us to be. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. We're going to uh, now give our uh, seed offering, find out a seed offering. Amen. Knowing if we uh, plant the seed, God will bring the um, increase. Uh, $5, $1 for each business day. For those who may be watching us across various platforms, you can go to our website, www.mcbcplace.com. You can click on the donate button. And you can give via... Um, PayPal, or you can use our uh, Zelle account. Um, our Zelle account is Mount Calvary Baytown at gmail.com, or you can send your gifts via mail to P.O. Box, PO Box uh, 2672, 2672 
uh, Baytown, Texas, 77522. Two. You would think I had that memorized. I've been saying this so long. But sometimes the numbers escape me. Amen. Amen. One dollar for each business day. Thank God for all of God's blessings. Jesus the Christ we pray and all the believers said together. 